Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this, if you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 108. Please turn to it. Page 108. <coughs> and today is our lesson number 56. Today we will discuss the concept of absolute value. So before we actually solve the problem, let's just take a couple of seconds to make sure that we understand what absolute value means. Absolute value simply measures distance. The concept of absolute value, for example, if you're measuring distance from zero on the number line, here is this point which is five units away, and here is this point which is seven units away. Obviously it's on the left hand side, it's going to be negative seven, this is positive five. Absolute value measures distance. That's what it is. Absolute value measures distance. That's all. So here, if we ask ourselves which point is farther apart from zero, point A or point B, we're not going to say that that uh, B is farther apart because 0.5 is greater than negative 7. We're not going to say that 5 is greater than negative 7 because we're measuring distance. Which point is farther apart from 0? Obviously, point A is farther apart because point A is 7 units away from 0. Point B is only 5 units away from 0. Question is, how do we express this no How do we express this notion? The way we do that is by putting absolute value sign around it. So absolute value of negative 7 means that you ignore the negative part. Absolute value of negative 7 is just 7 and therefore absolute value of negative 7 is greater than absolute value of 5. Even though negative 7 itself is more than positive 5 but the absolute value of negative 7 is greater than absolute value of positive 5 because as we said when we take the absolute value we have to ignore the negative sign. For example, for example if someone tells us that the absolute value of a is 5, okay, listen carefully, for example, let's pick a different number so that it's not related to this one. Let's say for some example, someone tells us that the absolute value of A is 3. What is it that they have told us? Well, they have told us that A could be either, A is either equal to negative 3 or A is either or positive 3. We have no way of knowing. We cannot tell if we simply know that the absolute value of A is 3. All we know is that this point A is 3 unit away from 0 on the number line. But we can't tell which direction, therefore it could be negative 3 or positive 3. This is how we express this. Let's do the first problem, shall we? The first problem tells us that the absolute value of x minus 3, x minus 3 is equal to 5. Now just like here, just like here, all we know is that from this, from this statement, all we can ascertain, all we can surmise, all we can gather, all, all that we can infer from it is that x minus 3 is either equal to negative 5 or x minus 3 is equal to positive 5. One or the other, we can, but we can, there is no, for, no way for us to tell. And now we solve for x and we'll find two different values of x. For example, if this happens to be true, then in order to find the value of x, we add 3 to both sides. These 3 is going to cancel out, and we find that x is equal to negative 5, and a positive 3, which is negative 2. So x is either negative 2, or we add 3 here, 3 cancels out, or x could be, or x could be positive 8. In either case, in either case, this will remain true. If x happens to be negative 2, we put in negative 2, let's do it down here so we can actually verify it. So if x happens to be negative 2 and then we'll find the absolute value of negative 2, you see x, it is, it is absolute value of x minus 2. Absolute, if x happens to be negative 2, then we have negative 2, this is x minus 3 actually. So if x minus 3 is what we're looking at here, so if x happens to be negative 2, then we have negative 2 and a negative 3, which gives us absolute value of negative 5 and absolute value of negative 5 
is 5. You see, you just verified it. Similarly, if x happens to be 8, then the, 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 the quantity that we have is x minus 3. The absolute value of x minus 3 would be 8 minus 3, which is absolute value of 5, which of course is 5. As you can see, absolute value of negative 5 or positive 5, they're both going to be 5, which means x can be either 8 or negative 2. Those were the two solutions. There are two solutions to absolute value problems. One on the positive side of the spectrum, one on the negative side of the spectrum. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more on the next page. Actually, let's, let's, let's call it a day here. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye, bye. Let's, let's just leave it at that. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.